uh, once all of this is all sorted out, uh, we're going to have to return to civics, teaching civics in in schools, you know, as you know, go to elementary school, you know, I mean, start at the earliest possible point that you can. And then even adults uh, out in the world, you know, what's wrong with taking, you know, some type of uh, uh, distance, you know, late life learning. Uh, real quick, I just need to say thank you to Gino. Gino says, what if the 10 days of darkness is the 10 days of a Biden administration? I, I proposed this the other day. That would make a lot of sense. You know, I mean, we certainly got a scare event. A lot of people have been very scared this week, uh, you know, at the prospect of a Biden administration. It was dark as heck for the first two days. You know, I mean, in the Telegram group, the people were just, you know, gnashing teeth and very, very upset. You know, we've been duped. But then again, you never know how many of those people saying that stuff are just mindless shills uh, who have been sent in by places like Media Matters or George Soros funded uh, institutions. Or maybe they're just AI bots meant to go in and uh, try to sow dissent. Yeah. You know, I'd like to say something to that just psychologically with comments like running a company which was banking on having a friendship with with these that one comment uh, can poison like even in life it, do you want to add something positive or do you just want to poison mm-hmm. the conversation with ad hominem attacks or really negativity do you want to build someone up or do you want to knock them down like mm-hmm. who do you want to be and and i feel well, yeah we have to really again use discernment have self awareness and um really think for for ourselves and that's why i also listen to disinfo i listen to everybody oh you, you have to know what the other side is saying i mean it's it's part of the job description for us yeah well um i got uh, zach and i now listen to lester holt oh, <laughs> every God. and we like we're like is he human is he human? <laughs> Hi. Um, and, and just like every day pounding with the coat, like every day we're shattering records of death and, and creating like vaccine demand. So um, who's, whose shoulders are, are that, is that going to be on now? Is Joe Biden going to take responsibility for all of the COVID deaths? You know, it's, it's interesting. I mean, COVID is definitely a killer. It killed gunshots. It killed uh, heart attacks. It killed car accidents. We don't have any of those deaths anymore. Every death in the United States is all related to COVID. Now, Akira over on pill.net says you can access the Heritage Foundation. They have free courses on the Constitution. Everybody go sign up for your courses on the Constitution at the Heritage Foundation. I receive emails from them on a daily basis. (laughs) So, yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty insane. It's pretty insane to see what they're trying to do. But what about Biden trying to send troops to Syria? Yeah, it, it, it's incredible. Uh, President Trump do, does the, the troop drawdowns. And of course, I mean, I, I expected that, you know, uh, that Joe Biden would immediately try to get us back into global conflicts. Uh, because, you know, how else are the uh, the the uh, perpetrators of the military industrial complex supposed to make their money if we're not using munitions, if we're not using bombs and vehicles and, uh, you know, all the supplies for these troops? I mean, you know, they're not going to have to replenish them. So this is the only way that they can do it. And, um, you know, something interesting also that I saw just uh, this this week was. Uh, the uh, the National Guard, they've pushed the National Guard out of the Capitol. They don't want them in the Capitol, probably because they're afraid that they're going to arrest them. And they're forcing them to sleep in a parking garage. And uh, the pictures that they released, there's a big red line on the pillars in the parking garage. I, I thought that that was interesting in the context of the posts. So apparently um, this what one thing I, I read was that someone wasn't wearing a mask. Mm. And that a Trump uh, offered for the troops to stay at the Trump Hotel and then Congress invited them back. Mm. Did you hear that? I did not see that. No, no. But God bless President Trump. Yeah, I got emotional again. I, I don't know, like, if it's denial, but I just, and I'm pretty intuitive. Like, I don't know. I don't see, I can't imagine four years of this charade. And... You know, I don't want to use the excuse, oh, we need to expose more corruption. No, we need action. It, it's, it's enough is enough. There's enough of us who see the corruption. And to go back to Swampville with all these usual suspects watching masked on top of that masked Hillary, Hillary, and, and 
um, <laughs> Michelle Obama and and just Clinton, just a farce, just charade. Uh, Lady Be Good over on Twitch said, so obviously no arrests are happening if they are afraid the troops were going to do that and kick them out for it. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't count that out just yet because the troops are still in Washington, D.C. Like we said at the beginning of the show, Washington, D.C. is still a demilitarized zone. I don't think those fences, I don't think that razor wire is ever coming down. We've got National right. Guard. We've got National Guard in every single state capital all across this country. I mean, can you think of a better scenario to be able to round up the deep state? I mean, all of those indictments are still there. They mm -hmm. still exist. Okay, mm -hmm. so there is a pr and uh, uh, John Durham's investigation has not been completed. It has not been revealed. He's got the power of a special prosecutor. So no matter who is the president. Uh, at that time, I mean, he's going to he's going to bring it out and there's going to be some movement on that. You know, there is just there are too many things that have been put in place. And President Trump gave yeah. up. He he apparently gave up so easily. You know, I mean, uh, if you look at the, the the way that he acted on the sixth, I mean, very confident he knew. Uh, you know, exactly what happened. He was communicating to us very effectively. We all knew what happened. We understood the fraud. And uh, it, it appears that the, the only people who didn't were the people who could, uh, you know, do something about it, apparently. Right. And not willing to look at the evidence. But, you know, President Trump's not a quitter. You know, right. I mean, I, I played this clip on the show uh, uh, during the week, uh, maybe a week or two ago, uh, where... He uh, he he mentions uh, to Chris Wallace during an interview that, you know, someday he'd like to maybe lose everything basically on purpose so that he could then see, you know, who's loyal and who is not. And one of the greatest things that came out of this is that President Trump is fully aware of who has his back and who doesn't. All right. And, you know, he's talking about starting the Patriot Party. It, I, I am very, very excited about the prospects of an actual competitive third party. Every single person that voted for President Trump will join that Patriot Party. They will vote for whoever President Trump tells them to vote for. And, you know, I, I do believe that this is part of the plan all along. You know, I, I don't know the timing. Everybody wants to know the timing. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I'm not the one making this schedule. And, you know, I, I you know, very few people are. So it's just one of those things that we have to uh, we have to allow to happen now. Uh, I do believe President Trump and, and the people who are on his side deeply care about America. So I can't, like, I can't believe they're just going to let it all go to shit. Pardon my language. You know, that's not going to happen. Me? Yeah, I can, can hear me? you. Because um, this goes off it. So one thing, one thing I'd like to say is that during this coming to the election and now, I mean, do you want someone that's telling you they – that were in the darkest days are yet to come, dark winter, fear, fear. Someone who said, I had coronavirus, I'm cured, where we need to open up the country. Just who do you want to go with? That's one thing. You want to see barbed wire? No, I hope, that, I do hope we go to sunny Mar-a-Lago. But like barbed wire, fear, fakery? No, that we, we don't. That's that's not what we want. I, I wanted to share some of the um, some things in the documents that I yeah, came please, across. Yeah, please, please. Also, some of the things that this intel officer gave, and it'll be maybe I can start with that, and you can speak with Zach uh, that can take it way further than I. But basically, this is um, intel officer I spoke to and uh, talked about. A soft takeover by China. There, there was an awareness, and we talked about Icarus. Do you know about Icarus? I, uh, I, I don't know. No, no. So I, I don't um, know a hundred percent about Icarus, other than um, it's a god that. Uh, oh, oh, sky. Icarus got too close to the sun. Yeah. Yeah. Great guy. And, and and we've seen a lot of people in the past couple of weeks fall to the, fall to their death. Like the Rothschild um, dude, um, I think it was eighty-seven. The sweet, no, the Sweden low Sweden guy, guy, the Roth, yeah. the, the Rothschild that died. 
Uh, there was a, a man that leapt to his death with a baby, but I don't know who. I, who I know was. that there was an Australian woman who leapt to her death, and there was also a Chinese national who was connected to Hillary Clinton that leapt to her death, also with her child. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Icarus fell from the sky is tied to the operation having to do with blackmail operation, blackmail inflation, okay. and um, this ha- has. This and Zach can speak a lot more. So I'll move move on. The big, basically a blackmail inflation, which is slow poison. And if it's Operation Icarus, then you have people le- leaping to their death. Um, she said that all the alphabets are corrupt, mm-hmm. and uh, that the siege, the, the cap- January sixth, was kind of a rushed and manufactured operation. And it was to rationalize military occupation. We've been under threat, infiltrated, every facet of the government for a while. Mm -hmm. Think invisible enemy. Um, Trump as presidency has been an operation from the beginning. And what it, what we're seeing, because I noted, like, was this pre-taped? Because I, there was an account and the weather was different and blah, blah, blah. So I asked and, she said that we want to continue to control the continuity of government level one. And you can go and there's con, it, there's an acronym to that, but the continuity of government. Yes, yeah, COG. So, uh, yeah. Okay, there you go. So were, on the surface, you can see that the so- storyline FEMA was activated, DC is under lockdown. So technically, no one can leave. Uh, that's, you know, you can go in. Um, and get checked, but but my understanding was you you can't leave. Um, so then he brought up the Smith Smithmund Act of 2012 of Obama age. Do you know of that? Yes, that's when he made it legal to um, broadcast uh, uh, propaganda to uh, to the United States citizens. Now uh, Z Patriot in the chat had said something very interesting. He said, "Be careful of people who tell you that they have." Uh, inside information because there are strict NDAs for anybody who has this information. Obviously, people with access can give certain things, but they can't necessarily tell you very specific things. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. yes. And, and people course, are p- people are desperate I, to get information yeah. right now. You know, so and be careful, course, guys. I am wondering as I'm here. So please, yeah, take it. Just put it in the back of your bonnet is the saying but that I'm wondering how is this person telling me this she hasn't vetted me but she has Zach is vetted Mm -hmm. and maybe these are the seeds of the narrative that we are being given and you have to keep you you have to consider that so I I say that full on um, in this capacity I'm sharing information that was given to me that I find interesting as opposed to finding a document which also you know it, this day and age uh, so much disinfo like you said um, so a soft takeover by a communist regime mm-hmm. and uh, that what we're seeing is just basically a takeaway is a, a show that Q started as a organically and was co-opted by the military mm-hmm. and that we're seeing kind of a derad um, going on, which I not I myself heard of that term, and I realized like kind of the recovery of, of the narrative is dismal. There, there's the recovery rate of, of rescue. Think of the notion of the recovery rate of rescuing a narrative and getting it back from the truth. Let's say a George Floyd or even January sixth. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's not it's not very likely. Anyway, so that's I have that to, to share, and then. If I may read some of the things from this document, this court document that. Yeah. Please go go ahead, and then we're going to bring people in for the calls. Oh, cool. All right. So their intention. So talking about the Federal Reserve, um, their intention is clear, and the history is cast in cement. These trust management organizations have committed gross breach of trust, gross fiduciary malfeasance, gross unlawful conversion, gross identity theft gross conspiracy to defraud. They are an international crime syndicates in every sense of those words, and they are on the verge of repeating their past history like parasites. Mm. They have simply moved on to other hosts' past 
passing from the United States of America major to the United States of America minor and now to the United Nations city slash state. So consider if there is a soft takeover, if there is truth, which I've spoken to Canadian friends that there are the Chinese troops. I don't know if you've heard this. I have heard that. Yeah. Yeah. In Mexico and in Canada. Yeah. So um, these international investors who are owed money because with the Federal Reserve, it it keeps on carrying over. Right. It's Mm -hmm. never paid. It just debt, debt, debt with these IOUs. So these international investors who are owed money by the United States, Inc., will come knocking on the doors of millions of Americans under the false presumption that these people agreed to stand as sureties for the debts of E.G., Harry Reid, Nancy Pelosi, A.L., all doing business as the United States, Inc. Um, this There's constructive fraud. Sorry deceit identity theft being carried out by private for-profit largely foreign corporations operating on american soil under charters and treaty arrangements that they have abundantly and criminally violated so let's say this person maybe made a mistake and thought she was suing maybe she did and they're covering for it um certainly when i read this document, I think this is an intelligent person. I mean, recently, I mean, this year, someone had reached out to me. I found a suit after the fact, and they said that they had neural linkware in their brains. I mean, sure, you could just be like, okay, bipolar, cast away, but I just, I'm not like that. I find there's a lot of merit, and if we were to look at some of these statements, they're true, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. Um, now, I, I have found... Uh, some, this is from the CJS, this is from Corpus Juris Sec, uh, I know there are law people out there, uh, this is apparently some United States law code, but it says in there that the United States government is a foreign corporation with respect to a state, uh, and, I mean, it's, it's cited numerous times, uh, stating that the United States is a foreign corporation uh, in a number of different places. So th- there's one of the things that people often say in regards to this topic is that, you know, no, it's not a corporation because I've got this article from Fact or Myth or wherever, uh, you know, trying to debunk the idea that it's not a corporation. Although when you look at you know, uh, the the verbiage in, you know, so like Supreme Court cases and other cases, you know, it does, in fact, uh, identify the United States as a corporation. Now, J.R. said that back, you know, I don't know, a couple hundred years ago, you know, or, or whenever these uh, various things were recorded, that a corporation was a common word for uh, a, a type of government. But, I mean, there are different, I guess now the definition of a corporation is different. And I, you know, this is from... Oh, this is from 1896 okay. uh, that this this was found. Uh, and let me see. Yeah, there there are various court cases where the United States has been uh, uh, defined as a corporation. 